Gates of Hell is expanding to a new front with the announcement today of Call to Arms Gates of Hell Airborne, adding new missions, vehicles, models, and introducing the Netherlands, though not as a faction, to the game. While a release date isn't known yet, it'll likely not be very far away. My guess is mid-September, actually more specifically on or around September 17th. Why do I think that? Keep watching. But first, this trailer is probably their best one yet. In a way, it felt like I was actually watching a trailer for a Band of Brothers RTS game. Here are a few general highlights regarding the new DLC, and then we'll get into some more nitty gritty stuff. In the upcoming DLC, you'll be playing as both the 82nd and 101st US Airborne Divisions. You'll follow these units as they make their way across Europe from Normandy to Market Garden, the Battle of the Bulge, and finally the crossing of the Elbe River. The Airborne DLC focuses on 12 single player missions, though they are of course playable in co-op with your friends. It's currently priced at eight bucks, which is definitely the cheapest Gates of Hell add-on since the release of the game. These missions will be, as the store page says, quote, in an immersive new format with battles taking place in France, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Germany, end quote. Now, what exactly this new format may be, though, isn't really explained. You might have come across some historical names from men who fought during battles the 82nd and the 101st to pardon. So perhaps Spears, Winters, Lipton, and others will make an appearance either as playable characters or as, say, an NPC who is giving you orders. The DLC will add seven new vehicles and weapons to Gates of Hell. First up, the American C-47. Of course, you can't have an American Airborne DLC without actually adding their workhorse. This plane not only transported paratroopers and supplies, but sometimes towed gliders all to be released over enemy-held territories. For the Germans, the 105 Leichte Feldhaubitze or Light Field Howitzer 18-40 is added as well. The Universal Carrier Mark II, an updated version of the Bren Carrier with a couple of upgrades like a waterproof hull as well as a towing hitch. Maybe there'll be some slight differences in terms of use in game compared to the Lent Lease 1 the Soviets already have access to. The Sherman 3 Late. I actually am not sure what the difference is even after researching a little bit between a regular Sherman 3 and a late version. So as always, I look forward to your comments to help me get educated on this for future reference down below. The Bedford Truck, used by the Commonwealth in all sorts of roles. I'm starting to see a small pattern here in terms of a certain faction's vehicles being added. Maybe it's a nod to the next faction, or maybe it's just filling in some missing things in the game's roster. What do you think? The two centimeter Flakwehrling. This should be a very good unit for German conquest players, especially early on. Ability to have a fast firing 20 millimeter quad auto cannon is going to really help in defensive battles against infantry, light vehicles, and well, 
of course, aircraft. Finally, the goatly boat. While this may not appear very heroic or interesting at a first glance, this little wooden and canvas boat actually saw use in the crossing of the River Vile during Market Garden. We'll talk about it in a little bit more detail up ahead. Furthermore, the Airborne DLC adds over a hundred environment models, including map assets for the Netherlands. I do hope they feature more of the Netherlands in a future add-on, and well, with the next DLC confirmed to be the addition of a new nation or faction, and well, this DLC adding Dutch-style buildings and environment assets, you could maybe assume that the next DLC will at least partially take place in the Netherlands. Now, obviously, the Dutch as a faction will probably never be added officially to gates of hell so this leaves us with not many other options perhaps the british or a commonwealth dlc is next i'm curious what you think is this dlc with dutch buildings and environment assets a hint for what we might see in the next big dlc or is it a classic misdirect from the developers let me know down what you think in the comments now, why did I say that I think the release will be on or around September 17th? Well, for beginners, it's the start of Operation Market Garden, and it's only about five weeks away. This gives the developers time to do some finishing touches, do some testing, while not losing too much of the hype from announcing the DLC too far in advance. Granted, it's very possible the release is not tied to a specific historical date. Originally, I figured Gates of Hell would release on June 22nd back in 2021 to coincide with the historical beginning of Operation Barbarossa, but they actually released the game on June 11th instead. A little bit more speculation, the page specifically mentions St. Mary Eglise and Brecourt Manor, as well as Bastogne, which covers at least three to four-ish missions. Based on the screenshots and of course the trailer, as well as the addition of that goatly boat specifically, it is very likely that the battle for Nijmegen and the battle for the two bridges there, though there are three now, there's only two back then, will also at least be one mission. I actually used to live very close to the bridge you see in the screenshots and trailers for most of my life. It'll be very interesting to see how the area will be recreated in the game. Furthermore, a sadly somewhat unknown part of Operation Market Garden is the crossing of the Wow River at Nijmegen by the 82nd. And no, they didn't just kind of cross the bridge on foot, they used boats to get across while under heavy German fire. Without going too in depth about the specifics here, this was nothing short of heroic and I hope we get to recreate this event in the game. Now, one of the screenshots with the Carentan town sign, and of course, obviously also seen in the trailer, heavily implies we would get to recreate the famous battle for Carentan. This is where German and American paratroopers, amongst other units, would fight it out for control over the city. So now we've covered at least six to seven potential missions. What else do you think we'll see? Let me know down below. Before we talk a little bit more about the trailer, this one screenshot I wanted to highlight specifically. It almost reminds me of some of the Postscriptum or Squad 44 artwork, and it's crazy to think that this is an RTS and not a first-person shooter. So the trailer obviously made a lot of Band of Brothers references. From the men running into the MG42 from the Carentan Cafe with Winters telling them to get up, a short reference to Spears, I believe, although his rank is wrong, who ran through enemy lines and back again at Foy during the Battle for the Bulge, and then two more references from the Battle for the Carrington episode with the wounded soldier being carried with the exploding building and the man versus man standoff as well. I probably missed one or two so let me know which ones I missed in the comments. It's been honestly a very long time since I've watched the show and it's probably due for a rewatch. I personally think it is cool that the developers went for a smaller more story based single player and co-op focused add-on if anything to keep us busy while they work away on the next big faction DLC. Hopefully this DLC does okay and it might make the way for more smaller very optional DLCs like it that can focus on, say, German Fallschirmjäger, Soviet Black Jacket Marines, or if they were added to the game at some point, for example, British Commando Operations. With all that said, I look forward to getting my hands on the DLC and getting some videos made on it, specifically, of course, the Nijmegen missions. Are you going to get the Airborne DLC and are you looking forward to any, like, specific missions in this one? Or do you have a great idea for a similar-ish DLC? Let me know down in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.